Today we're going to look at something called an absolute prime and we're going to prove a couple of nice results regarding these absolute primes. So what is an absolute prime? Well, sometimes it's also called a permutable prime, which maybe speaks to its definition a little bit more. So it's a prime so that if you shuffle around the digits of this number any way you want, you still get another prime number. So here are a couple small examples. So 37 and 73, well, those are both primes. So that's an example of an absolute prime. And then 113, 131, and 311 are all prime, meaning they're all absolute primes as well. Now, let's observe that absolute primes cannot contain even numbers as their digits. That's because, well, you could shuffle around the numbers and get an even number in the ones digit, and then thus the whole thing is even. I guess maybe there is an absolute prime that contains an even digit, and that's the number two. Um, and likewise, absolute primes cannot contain the number five as a digit, unless it's five itself. And that's because you could shuffle around the digits and end up with five in the right-hand portion, and then you've got something divisible by five. So that means absolute primes can only contain the digits one, three, seven, and nine. At least maybe the interesting absolute primes, and by interesting I mean the ones that are more than two, sorry, more than one digit. The first result that we're going to prove is that there is no absolute prime that contains all of these digits. So I think that's pretty interesting to start with. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, let's suppose that we've got a number n that contains all of the digits 1, 3, 7, and 9. And now I'd like to show that this cannot be an absolute prime. And how are we going to do that? Well, let's consider the permutations of the following form. And that form is like this. Well, it's going to be of the form 10,000 times m plus some remainder. So in other words, what we're doing is like looking at all of the numbers built by permutations of the digits of n, and then we're doing division with remainder. And we're going to consider the remainders to be four digit numbers built out of these four digits. So in other words, the remainders come from the following set. So I'm going to write it like this, 7931, and then 1793, that's the next one, and then 9173, that's the next one, and then 7913, and then 7193, and then 1, 9, 3, 7, and then the last thing in this set will be 7, 1, 3, 9. Okay, so let's back up a little bit and see what we've done. We've taken the set of all numbers, which is made up by permutations of our original number, but we're only considering some of those. We're considering the ones that have the last four digits coming from the following set. And then, well, essentially we're taking the first lots of digits just to be whatever kind of permutation that we want. We're focusing on the last um, type of number. We're focusing on the last four digits. Okay, so now where are we going to go from here? So at this point, what we want to do is reduce modulo 7. And, well, we might say, well, why are we going to reduce mod 7? Why not mod 3 or mod 9 or mod 11 or mod 5? Well, it turns out that reducing mod 2 is not super interesting. It won't give us enough information. Reducing mod an even number won't give us enough information. Reducing mod 5 won't give us much information either because that only will tell us what's happening in the last digit. Reducing mod 3, well, that's not helpful because that's the same as the digit sum. Notice that reduction mod 3 is invariant under these types of permutations. And so 7 is the smallest number that retains enough information. Okay, so if we reduce this thing mod 7, then this number that we started out with here, which maybe I'll call capital N, now we can say capital N is congruent to 
Well, if we reduce 10,000 mod 7, we get the number 4. So we have 4m plus r. But now r comes from the set of all of those four things reduced mod 7. But those are carefully chosen so that we get the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And now I think you could probably see how things are shaping up. So depending on what M is, we can choose the appropriate R to make N divisible by 7. And so I'll just do a, an example or two here, but let's say if... M is, let's say, congruent to 3 mod 7, then that means that 4M is equal to 12, which is congruent to 5 mod 7. And then we can take R to be equal to, let's see, 2. And what we'll have is that N is congruent to 5 plus 2 mod 7. In other words, N is congruent to 0 modulo 7. And remember, we have a choice of this value of r here. That's because we're working with all of the permutations here. And what we get out of this is that, well, this particular permutation is not prime. It's divisible by 7, meaning our original number cannot be a absolute prime or an absolute prime. But this is only in the case when m is congruent to 3 mod 7. Now we could run through the rest of the cases as well. So if m is maybe congruent to 5 modulo 7, then what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that 4 times m, so that's 20, but 20 is the same thing as 6 mod 7. And now what we'll do is we'll take r to be equal to 1 just by choosing the correct permutation. And what we'll see is that in that case, we'll have n is congruent to 0 mod 7. So it's, again, it's divisible by 7, so it can't be prime. And now, well, you've got four more cases to choose, but each of these cases will allow you to choose a particular r that will make whatever permutation of our original number that you're working with divisible by seven, and thus it's not prime. So going back up to the top, what have we done? Well, we've started with a particular number that contained the digits one, three, seven, and nine, and we've shown that it's possible to construct a permutation or a permuted digit number out of that original number that's divisible by seven. But that means that we don't have an absolute prime here. But that's essentially what we wanted to show. Okay, so now that we've taken care of this, I'd like to do one more result. Okay, so next up we'll show that no absolute prime contains three of one digit and two of an unequal digit. And so let's see how we could do this. Well, let's maybe suppose that uh, our number, I'll just call it our number, has three A's and two B's. But then that means it has permutations of the form, well, of the following six forms. Maybe I won't write all of them down. I'll leave some of it as a bit of a homework exercise. So the first form is going to be m times 10 to the 5 plus the number AAABB. So I'll put a line over it. But what it is, it's a number with the first three digits A and the last two digits B. And then maybe the next one would be m times 10 to the 5 plus a, a, b, a, b. So those are the last four digits. Sorry, that's five digits. And then the next one would be m times 10 to the 5 plus, let's see, b, a, 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 b. So those are the last five digits in this case. And then m times 10 to the 5th plus, let's see, B, A, A, B, A, and then M times 10 to the fifth, plus, and it's going to be A, B, B, A, A, and then M times 10 to the fifth, plus, let's see, A, B, A, B, A, and then the last one will be M times 10 to the fifth, plus, 
B A B A A. Okay, great. So those are all definitely permutations of our original number. Okay, but now the trick here is to decompose it in the following way. So I'm going to write this first one like this. I'm going to write it as m times 10 to the fifth plus a a a a a. So let's see, we've got five a's there. And then plus 11 times b minus a. So that 11 times b minus a has the effect of changing these two digits on the right hand side to be equal to 11. And then since we're going to use this maybe exact type of number over and over again, I'm going to name this bit right here, this m times 10 to the fifth, I'm going to name that capital N. And then I'm going to name this number here, b minus a to equal c. Okay, good. And now uh, maybe up here, let's observe the possible values of c. So the possible values of C here are plus minus two, plus minus four, plus minus six, and plus minus eight. And that's because A and B come from the set one, three, seven, nine. And then actually, while we're at it, let's maybe notice that if we reduce this mod seven, which just a spoiler alert, that's what we're about to do, this set turns into one, two, three, four, five, six, mod seven. Okay, so those are the appropriate residues mod seven there. Okay, great. And then, well, now we can just play this game over and over again. So this second one can be rewritten as n plus, and then let's see, we'll have 101 times c. This third one is equal to n plus, and then let's see, we'll have one zero 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 one times c. This next one is n plus one zero zero one zero times c. This one is n plus one one zero zero times c. Let's see, the next to last one will be our number capital N plus one zero one zero times c. And then this last one is n plus one zero one zero zero times c. Okay, great. But now we're gonna reduce this thing mod seven, which was hinted to in that pink box over there. Okay, so reducing this first one mod seven, notice that we're gonna get n plus four times c. And that's four because if we reduce 11 mod seven, we pretty clearly get the number four. So here, let's put a reminder that we're working mod seven. And then for this next family, we'll get n plus three times c mod seven. For this next one, we'll have n plus five times c modulo seven. Here we'll have n plus zero times c mod seven. I'll just put n mod seven. And that's because this 10010 is actually a multiple of seven. And then for the last couple, we're gonna have n plus c mod seven, and then n plus two c mod seven. And then finally here, we're gonna have n plus five times c modulo seven. Now let's notice in this list, we get n plus zero times c, n plus one times c, n plus two times c, all the way up to n plus six times c. But then you can check that if you replace c with one, two, three, four, five, or six, you'll simply get n, n plus one, n plus two, n plus three, all the way up to n plus six. It's just the order of all of these will switch when you do that. Well, I guess if c is equal to one, it won't switch, but in all of the other cases, the order will be shuffled. And that's based off of the rules of arithmetic mod seven and what things have inverses and what don't. So anyway, like I said, all of this is gonna boil down to the following maybe list. We'll have n, n plus one, n plus two, n plus three, n plus four, n plus five, and n plus six, all going mod seven. 
And now we'll play our same game. It's just a couple of more steps here. We'll look at n, so this number that we built right here, and we'll figure out what n is congruent to mod 7. And then what we'll do is we'll choose whatever it takes over here to make the final result congruent to 0 mod 7. And then we'll work backwards. So if it required an addition of 4 to be 0 mod 7, then we would find out where that 4 came from. Perhaps the 4 came from this n plus 3 times c, maybe the value of c that we had made 3 times c congruent to 4 mod 7. So you would go here. And then we would work backwards and we would see that the number that we have over here is divisible by 7. But maybe perhaps it was something else. Perhaps n is congruent to 1 mod 7. That means n plus 6 is congruent to 0 mod 7. And then we would work backwards from there. Perhaps that would require an n plus 2c. Working all the way back, this number right here would be congruent to 0 mod 7. But the point here is that no matter how you shake it up, one of these seven numbers that is on our list is a multiple of seven, meaning that it's not prime. But that's what we wanted to show. Our number with three A's and two B's is impossible to be prime. And that's a good place to stop.